Amory, you are a high achiever, aren't you? I could say that. What kind of genius level are you? Uh, so I did an, an A level in computing at 11, and, and as far as I know, I'm still the youngest girl to have done so, and graduated with a master's from Oxford in maths and computer science at 20. We hear quite a lot that um, girls are better at science and maths at school, but that does not translate into the workplace. What, what's happening to stop so many of these really bright girls from continuing to outnumber men in the workforce in science and tech? So, so the biggest thing is the social norm and it's that awareness of the options that you have but also the role models and the people that have gone before you which either the girls don't know or the influences around them so whether it's parents or teachers or, or peers don't have and don't use in the conversations that they have with the girls around their love of technology or their love of science. So there's almost this sense that they're, they're conditioned out or driven out because they're almost going against the grain by going into science and technology. So there are female role models and there have been female role models in science and technology that what just aren't talked about. I guess. Absolutely, they've almost been written out of history. So I talk a lot about the STEM history and the fact that if you look in any display of famous scientists and mathematicians, it's all dead white guys, basically, you know. And, and so you think that maybe it is just for dead white guys to do. And of course, there are loads of living guys that are working in science and technology, but also loads of dead women that have, that have created things like Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, of course, famously Hedy Lamarr, the first programme was written by Ada Lovelace, but there are countless women whose stories we don't hear and whose we haven't been told. Um, and so that definitely uh, plays on that social norm. So you are a co-founder co of the STEMETS. Yep. Um, and you've also founded the Outbox Incubator. Incubator. Yep. Tell us about those. So STEMETS is a social enterprise. We work with girls and young women and our ethos is that it's always free for them, it's always fun for them and there's always food for them. <laughs> um, and what we do is we bring them into these STEM environments to try things out, to meet role models, but it, it is a girls only environment and, and they react very differently actually. In, in that kind of scenario, they're able to explore more and almost be freer to have a look at the different options that they have and consider themselves a STEMET as it were. Um, and with the Outbox Incubator, what we did was we took a load of teenage girls from across Europe, 115 of them, and put them in one massive house over the summer holidays. That must have been a riot. Incredible, it was great. <laughs> you know, there were all kinds of funny things happening, but it was all around STEM and entrepreneurship and saying, you know, here's your imagination, here's your STEM knowledge, what can you create, what can you build, and empowering them to do that for, for themselves and for others. There is this, this kind of mantra that I think is out there that uh, men and women are equal in every respect and the same in every respect. And I wonder whether women actually bring something different to science and technology or not. And, and, and everyone's capable of creating and doing the same kind of stuff. So what women, what women bring is a, is a slightly different perspective. And, and you know, they're not, not all women are the same, so it's not that they all bring that same different perspective. But it's about having a diversity of experiences that you bring to your field of endeavour and your, and your part of research. And so, you know, I, fame, I give the example all the time, there are things that women have created and there are other things that have been created but haven't had women as part of their design. So um, acoustics as well, women's voices are slightly different from, from men's voices and so we see this in acoustics and also in voice recognition technology. Um, so we all remember ye oldie Siri, kind of you'd ask it, give me directions to Hay Festival, it'd say, did you want some ice cream? You'd say, no, <laughs> it's not what it's then. Of course, it's because the types of voices that they were trained on. Um, and it's not just about women. So still now Siri doesn't understand Scottish voices, um, of course. But even down to lecture theatres and the fact that you know, men's, voice, men's voices are lower. And so when you have female voices that are slightly higher, often the acoustics don't well, work well for their voices to So carry. is it true then that you can design the acoustics of a room to work with female voices. It's not just the case that a lower register actually carries further. It's all in the design. It's all in how it's built. You know, if you built it for men's voices, you can build it, build it for women's voices. And it's actually about us making sure that as we move more into this sci-fi world with driverless cars and all sorts of computers ruling things, we make sure we don't have those same biases in what we're building. Um, you, you really want to encourage young girls to pursue a career in science and tech. How, do, how does the industry do that? So the industry works with organisations like ours to help translate what it is they do and, and almost do a bit of a PR job on, you know, you are creating really cool things, you are creating things that solve big problems. And it's not just a case of harder, faster, stronger, better, or building apps for your apps apps, but it, it is building technology that helps people and transforms lives. So 
another example I'd like to give is of the four uh, Nigerian girls at Maker Faire who turned up uh, with a, this device that turned a litre of urine into six hours of electricity. And so it's talking about those sorts of uses of what you're doing, but also the fact that it is incredibly creative, which is something that from very young we say to girls, you know, girls are creative, they like the arts. And it's like, no, they, you know, creativity exists across the whole spectrum. So allowing them to see that that's something that they can do. Um, but free food is a big part of what we do, and free food is a big part of the industry too. So we help them uh, free allow the girls to sample. Not just a girl thing. No, it's not. You. But it does apply to girls, and of course, free food tastes better than the food you've paid for, even if you are a young young girl. Yeah. What advice would you give to young girls who would like to get into a career in science and tech? So my advice to young girls is to look for your tribe and look for groups that you can plug into and get involved in. Technology is such a social thing to do, you rarely work on your own. So go out and find, whether it's other girls or other people like you near you, or whether it's groups like ours, come get plugged in, come join in and come and try some free food with us. It seems to me that there seems, seems to be a layer of ice to break because at the moment girls probably feel quite lonely if they're the only girl yep. in a room, in a lecture theatre or, or yep. in a room with computer scientists. So is it going to take some monumental effort to begin with to get the percentage up so that girls do feel more comfortable? Um, so it, it's a couple of things. I think even if you're lonely in that room, if you know there are others like you in other places, that definitely has been had a big bolstering effect. So with us, we've worked with over 15,000 girls in the last four years, and even more have seen our documentary. So there is that sense that I'm not alone, even if I don't necessarily know those people directly. Um, but it is, it, that's why we have these, these safe spaces for these girls to come to, at least temporarily, so you know you're not alone and you're able to build that network and it can be a bit more social. And, and the nice thing that we're seeing is that technology has actually been a great enabler for them to stay in touch. So we have a mobile app, there are various Facebook groups as well that girls have created for those around them. Um, so, so that's the kind of monumental change that has happened and is happening for that generation that means something for them. Um, of course, I'd love to see a technical female character in EastEnders or something like that to kind of <laughs> move the social norm just a little bit so that for the rest of us, that whole notion of there being a technical female is something that's not just the, that kind of one character in The Matrix or whoever it is in that Bond movie, but it's something that's a little bit more mainstream for all of us.